Hey photo friends and anyone watching this video, today we are launching a brand new Lightroom Mobile editing course. Lightroom Mobile is my preferred application for editing photos on the go. It's great because it's free if you just want to get started. It has the power of an Adobe product. But if you also have an Adobe subscription, it ties into the cloud. And so if you're using your Adobe Lightroom cloud-based app on your desktop computer, it automatically syncs with your mobile app on your phone or your tablet. So you could be editing photos or importing and organizing photos on one device and it will automatically appear on the other device. So for working and workflow, it's a great application. But at the same time, it's completely free. And most of the features that you'll need to edit your photos are free features. So you can go ahead and get started today. Now with this course, I've partnered with a new photographer that I haven't partnered with before. Chris Parker is one of the top rated photo editing professional photographers on Udemy and other platforms like Udemy. He creates great courses and I was excited to bring this course to you because this is a specific course that many students have asked for and the quality of this course is top notch. You're really going to enjoy it. I'm going to include a free preview lesson of what you'll get with this course. You'll see Chris editing a, an underexposed photo, making it look awesome in Lightroom Mobile. And you'll be able to get sort of the style and the quality of teaching from this, this free preview. If you want to enroll in the full class, I'll leave a link in the description. If you're watching this video in the first week of our launch, we always do a launch discount. It's only 10 bucks for the entire course. And with that, you get several hours of easy to watch, fun professional tutorials that takes you from complete beginner to advanced user of Lightroom Mobile. You get downloadable image files so that you can follow along and you get over 100 Lightroom presets. This is normally a 100 plus dollar value of presets that both Chris and I have created and you get all of those presets included in this course completely free included with the price of admission. So for the cost of a couple coffees, you get a full course, you get premium support if you ever get stuck, you get the Lightroom presets, and you get lifetime access to any course updates as well. So I'm gonna pass it over to Chris for a preview of the course. I hope you enjoy, and of course, click the link in the description to enroll in the full class. Bye. All right, so here's the first image we're going to fix in Lightroom. And as you can see, it's extremely underexposed, although the sky isn't really all that bad. But we will enhance the sky a little bit by adding some contrast and darkening it up just a little bit. But more importantly, from the sky lying down, we need to increase the exposure and adjust some different tonal ranges to bring out all the details in that part of the image. And we're also going to enhance the colors in the image so that they stand out a little bit more than they are now, and it's going to be much more vivid when we're done. So here's the final edit. How cool is that? I love it. So how did I achieve this edit? Well, in this tutorial and all that follow, you'll see how I edit images with unique problems, and once you're done with this section, you'll know how to fix your images with similar issues. Also, I just wanna mention again that I'm not going to go into great detail about all of the editing tools right now. Later in the course, we'll do a deep dive into each individual tool. So this section is just to get you started editing sooner rather than later. So if you're ready, let's get started. Now, typically the first two type of edits I like to apply to every image are to first select my color profile and then adjust the optics. So let's go ahead and start off by picking out a new color profile. I'm gonna go into color matching here and I'm going to select vivid which is going to give me the starting point that I want for the colors in my image. So they're gonna be much more vivid, more contrast, bolder, et cetera. Let's go into optics now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on enable lens correction, which is going to fix any distortions created by the lens that created this image. All right, I'm now going to go into the light panel here 
so we can begin fixing the exposure. So I'm gonna increase the exposure just a little bit. We're gonna do some targeting adjustments in just a second to make it much brighter in different parts. So I now wanna fix the shadows by increasing that to plus 100, and now that makes the rest of the image visible. I'm gonna increase the whites as well, which is going to add a little bit of contrast and make all the details stand out just a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna drop the highlights just a little bit because I did blow out the highlights with that adjustment. So I'm gonna bring this down to around minus 25. All right, let's begin working on local adjustments by applying a mask to the sky and then another mask to the rest of the image. And then we can target those areas to increase the contrast, the details, and the colors in those different parts of the image. I'm gonna go into my masking tool here. This is an advanced type of edit. It's gonna take a little while to get used to it, but once you begin learning how to use these tools, you're gonna to wonder how you ever worked without them. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a linear gradient here. I'm gonna click and drag down these three lines right here, and that's the area that I'm going to target with my exposure adjustments via the light panel. So I'm gonna darken up the sky just a little bit. I'm gonna increase, actually I'm gonna decrease the highlights to bring out some more details in there, and I'm gonna increase the contrast just a little bit so that they pop a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna click on the linear gradient icon now, so I can add another one. I'm gonna click here again, and this time I'm gonna click and drag up towards that skyline right there, or the horizon, I should say. So right about, right about there should be good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and increase the exposure so I can brighten up that part of the image. Look at that, so that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go right around one and a half stops, 1.5 on the exposure. I also wanna enhance the details a little bit more, add some contrast and some sharpening to that part of the image. So I'm gonna to navigate to the effects panel here and I'm going to increase the texture to around plus 15 and then let's increase the clarity as well so both of these is going to enhance those details to help them stand out a little bit more than they were before all right let's go ahead and close out of there by clicking on this check mark in the bottom right that's going to save those edits and the other thing I'm noticing is the horizon now is crooked, wasn't as obvious as before. So let's go into the cropping tool and I'm gonna click on this ruler right here and it's going to automatically fix the image and straighten it out, pretty cool. All right, hit that check mark again. And now we're gonna go into the color tool here to apply some color adjustments to make those colors pop a little bit more. So I'm gonna go into the color mix to access the different color channels that I want to target. And then I can change the color with the hue, increase or decrease the saturation or the brightness levels with the luminance slider. So for this image, I'm not going to make any adjustments to the hue, but for saturation, I'm going to increase the saturation for the orange, yellows, and blue. So I'm gonna go around, let's do, plus 40 looks pretty good. And then for the yellow, I think maybe a little bit less. So I'm gonna do right around plus 15. And for the blue, I'm gonna increase that just a little bit. Actually, I think that was aqua. So I'm gonna go to blue here and increase that as well. All right, I now wanna go back to the orange and the yellows here. And I wanna darken them up just a little bit. So maybe right around minus 21 looks good for the orange. And then for the yellow, maybe a little bit less, right around minus 15 or so. All right, I'm gonna click done to apply those edits and save them. I think what I need to do next is apply a vignette. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down to around minus 28 to minus 30. So right around there looks pretty good. I'm just gonna click on the image now to remove all those editing panels so we can take a look at the before and after. And that can be done by holding your finger on the screen. So just press on the screen and then that's going to show the before image. And once you release, it will show you the after image. How cool is that? I love it. 